everyone, Britishian here, and today I'm going through the entire LEGO Dungeons & Dragons minifigure series. So I guess we'll get straight into it because we got several figures to go through and kind of a bit of doubles to be honest. So first off here we have the Barbarian Dwarf. Now each of these minifigures, there's two different types. You have the um, the player character types, so this is the player character where it comes with a male and female head. Then you also have the um, NPC characters as I call them. So this is of course one of the um, uh, player characters. So first off here the first thing you'll notice is the axe. I really like the axe handle. You also got a torch for the other hand here with a barbarian. Um, going around you have nice printing on the arms like the um, neck piece there. Uh, it has the mid legs that they've been giving dwarves lately. Or your opinion. Um, you also have an alternative head of course. Um, with, on um, I say alternative head, the face as well, I should say it that way. Um, going around, you have back printing with a horn back there. And this is my least favorite of the um, D&D minifigures, to be honest. Uh, I just don't like, I don't think it looks natural for a person with that dark of skin to have red hair. But, it, yeah, it just doesn't quite look right to me and... It does, I have not seen it done naturally, so, but that's just kind of my nitpick because these character parts are supposed to be traded in and out, and like I said, you do have an alternative with each one. Here is the female counterpart. Uh, let's get the axe out of the way, and it's just an extra head that the figure comes with, so there's that. And each of these minifigures comes with this uh, tile piece that, um, that with a kind of stone pattern on it. I'm trying to figure out how I can use that in a, in a build because I, you get so many after collecting all of these. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comment section. Next up here we have the GIF. Good looking figure. Got this eyeball staff as a magic item as well as a dagger. Um, this is supposed to be a sorcerer. Going around, um, yellow has a yellow skin, so I kind of wish since they have so many main figures that have yellow skin, this one would have um, not. But guess you don't have the the facial markings. Um, overall, pretty solid figure. I do really like this one. Plus, small pointed ears, and you can use those for um, Lego elves with yellow skin. Alternative face, and um, of course, you do also get the counterpart um, being the player character um, there's the male face and turning this character around there's the alternative face potions on the back dual molded legs pretty solid of a figure overall next up we have the tiefling let's make sure we go on there we go comes with this magic missile match piece which I really like as well as this little dragon familiar which I know this is one of the most sought out minifigures just because of the dragon piece, which I don't blame them for. Um, yeah, so going around, got arm printing, shoulder printing. I really wish that they did something like printed on the tail there, because otherwise it was like at the midsection of showing up there. Um, taking off the hair piece, looking at the back at bag printing, as well as the alternative face, and get that with the tail piece. And um, of course, you do have the um, counterpart head. Let me get this figure ready. And okay, here we go. Yeah, so there it is. Horns a little bit on the darker side, just kind of my eye. Um, there's the alternative face. But yeah, pretty solid figure overall. Next, we have the Paladin. Or the Dragonborn Paladin, which has a really good shield. Uh, this is kind of a cool piece for the kind of the magic item base. I don't know exactly what it's supposed to be. I uh, got a pretty good recoloring of gold of the um, Lego Video Dragon Molded Head, horns in the back. Got a good looking armor piece, and this character, even though it's a player character, as I put it, doesn't come with an alternate head. So this is kind of a one and only. I wish you get a pretty solid. Um, print underneath the armor and 
I did make sure to get multiple of this figure so I can have that print because I really do like it. Um, to spin it around for you, there's the back printing. And um, I guess let's put the armor back on so you can get a good look at the print that's also on the armor. And yeah, pretty solid figure overall. And I usually play Paladin, so I will definitely be using this armor elsewhere. Now we have the Gnome Druid, which is um, pretty good. You got this new her, um, brown bird. I think it's new in the exclusive print to this figure. Um, going around, you also have this Brickle Staff. So let's move those out of the way so you can get a good look at the figure again. Oops. So, because of the hood piece with antlers attached, these antlers are kind of a rubber base that's a hard plastic, harder plastic. The front piece, no arm printing at all. There's the alternative head. Got a double printed case. So you have dark green on one side and brown on the other. And on the same time, you can see the dual model legs as well as the back printing. So, yeah, pretty solid figure overall. Another very common one. And, um, you also have the uh, female counterpart for the gnome. And um, going around back, there you go. And each of these figures actually has gloves, and so their skin tone is not showing. So you can actually swap the heads and make customizations to make your D&D character with these, which is really nice. Next, we have the Aarakocra. Now, this being a player character, it doesn't have a counterpart head just like the Dragon Board didn't. Uh, comes with this little gray dog companion, which is cute, but kind of it just kind of feels like it's tacked on because we get a lot of dogs in Lego. Uh, but also, I feel like this is kind of the hardest character to customize quite a bit because the leg printing on it is. I wish it was more generic. It has some little bit of clothing coming down, but, but I wish it didn't quite have that so you can move the meat back a little bit more easily. Got the newer bow mold, very big, and wings going around the back. The new molded head, which I oh, like this character, I feel like it's we didn't quite need it because we had the Chima eagles. You can use them. There's the back printing, but for what we got, it's actually a pretty good figure, and I actually do really like the head of it. Next, here we have the Mind Flare with the Intellect Devourer. Being two into the monsters here, and Intellect Devourer is actually a uh, molded piece. Um, Pretty cool overall arm printing with a mind flare. Another one I wasn't really counting on because we have molds that work with Lego from other sets, like one of the newer alien heads. Um, but if I grab a nearby minifigure that I have here, um, I just happen to have Harry nearby. We can put the intellect devourer on top of the head there. So uh, they could be eating Harry's brains, for example, which is pretty violent. I'm surprised Lego actually went and did it, to be honest. But yeah, pretty good set, especially, or any figure, especially with the specially molded head. Next up, we have Stran von Zorovich. And now pretty good character. This is probably one of the most iconic ones. He comes with a black rat as an accessory. Love the printing, has a signature goblet that he's known for on the covers. Fantastic torso printing. Got a sword um, that he's known for, that goes along locks, he's got a bluish cape, gold or paper material. Going back, you can see the cape is still printed on underneath, so technically you don't need a cape uh, for this figure. And you can see the alternative face there. Overall, a fantastic figure and one of my favorites in the series. Next, we have the Elven Bard. Now, this one, I uh, don't really quite like the magenta gloves for it. comes with the blue. I do like the so there, I'll probably switch out the hands to be honest. Um, it's got mold, dual molded legs, back printing. I do yeah, like the teal though with magenta um, cave, but I just feel like it's too much from the gloves. You can see the same base there as well as we turn the back and see the alternative base. And as like the other playable characters with the two exceptions, we do actually have a um, female counterpart. Um, I do like her singing face, but I'm not a big fan so much of her um, normal face. But, yep, those are, those are the elves. Next, we have the Lady of 
cane. Now, she does come with a um, two by two round cylinder that she stands on because she's supposed to be floating, but that is too much for my camera. And I wanted to keep her more zoomed in so you can see the detail of the main figure. So I removed that. She comes with this box. I have not been able to figure out what it is. And I've asked my comment section about it and nobody has been able to reply yet. So if you happen to know, please let everybody else know. I uh, got the front of the orange lobes here, uh, loving the reddish orange cape, of course. I don't know how it just kind of flurs out like that. Really unique and weird for her. There is back printing, of course, while I'm having the front. Uh, her helmet slash mask. I kind of wish it was her. She just had a separate head. I just think that would have looked better because it looks kind of odd. Her face is too far forward on the later main figure, and underneath she all she has is a black head. So a little bit disappointing there. But there's just kind of something that I wish would have improved upon. But eh, it's a fine figure overall. Next up we have Zaz Tan. Um, really solid figure overall. I'm just not a big fan of the Wizards of Thay or the wet Red Wizards of Thay. Uh, we do get this really cool transparent red skull. It's also a fire piece. Um, basically, I kind of wish that we've gotten um, um, oh, what's his name? Vecna. I think Vecna would have been a, a better choice for it because Vecna is such an icon of Dungeons and Dragons. Got the bag printing there with the cape with the collar in dark red. And the robes are fine, but yeah, I don't care for this character too much. Let me know your thoughts. Then lastly, we have Tasha, from, as known by her spell, Tasha's Hideous Laughter. She has her spell book here with ta the Tasha's Hideous Laughter spell tile in there. It's pretty cool. Got her cauldron that she's also known by with a pink fire piece. That's not connected and it tends to fall out, but it's kind of cool to have the pink fire. Um, got her, her face with the switch's head, which is a really good mold and like a uh, dual uh, printing on the arms, dual mold of legs. And um, here is her alternative face. Pretty good figure overall. Um, it's just I don't think Tosh is well known as much as like Warden Kanan or any of the other Gygaxian characters. So let me know your thoughts of these main figures down in the comment section below. I also like to thank you all for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.